Okay, people, we have to go to Key Stage 98 for this one because Key Stage 3 is not going to work as I'm about to mix a whole bunch of issues and conversations into one, so please follow me if you care to. The Sarah Everard vigil and how the police acted at that event was vile and is our starting point for the conversation on what I like to call empathy politics. Police officers should receive specific training on de-escalated situations and not fall in prey to taking advantage of power dynamics because being a police officer is a job and people tend to try and do a job that they like. So it stands to reason that some people choose to be a police officer because they like the idea of it. But what about it do they, what about it do they like specifically? I've come across a lot of police officers that I would argue reveled in their authority and the power given to them by the law. And to be clear, I've had many interactions with the police and in 90% of the scenarios, I've de-escalated the situation, but it's like, why am I having to de-escalate the situation? Why is this officer's tone immediately so abrupt and accusatory? Now, I'm skilled enough that I never go where people try to take me, so I don't let their tone inform my tone. But really and truly, that's what they should be doing. But let, let's put the potential desire some officers may have for power to the side. Most of the times they interact with people on the job, it's because they're essentially breaking the law. So being in that, being in that many negative scenarios could have someone's back up against the wall all the time. Police officers should have regular psychological evaluations and training because they are in a high stress job and they are humans. And humans have emotions, humans have bad days, and humans have agendas. Let's, let's go deeper. People are shocked at the footage of the officers dragging women away from the vigil, but that's what happens when a lot of police officers face defiance. Not just wrongdoing, but defiance, because defiance is a dismissal of their authority once it's been presented to you. And the exercising of their authority is where some officers get their joy. They knew that the people there knew that because of COVID, they shouldn't be standing outside in groups. So the visual representation of their defiance is them still standing there when the police have arrived. And where a lot of people, where a lot of police, sorry, see defiance, they desperately seek compliance and it's not necessarily for the law's sake. But while they perceive defiance, the people there were just more focused on honoring Sarah. Well, the visual representation of my defiance to some officers is my skin. Oh snap, where's he going? My skin sends signals to some officer's brain that I am defiant because of how they perceive people with my skin. Whether due to their own biases, media brainwashing, the actions of a few, yada, yada, yada. But see, those white women's skin in those videos is exactly why the police's actions are getting such media attention right now because had those been black women's skin, oh, so many people wouldn't have been talking about it because their skin would have represented defiance to some viewers because their skin was white, the police brutality gets the focus and not the COVID law breaking because the ladies didn't optically come across defiant. If it were black women, the skin and the COVID rule breaking and not dispersing immediately would have been just cause for drag ration to many on social media. I could only imagine the tweets, but they, they shouldn't have been out there anyway. Now, at this point, some of you will think that I'm reaching, but follow me to Kate Middleton. She comes in standard clothing to honor Sarah's death. No mask, days after Harry's interview, when we haven't seen the royals in months. I ain't seen these brothers about, but we've seen Prince Charles at a black church in the last few days. Then you saw William and Kate and a black woman walking with them. Then Kate, no mask, honoring Sarah. Sarah, sorry. Now, clearly this is all done on purpose by the firm or whoever as a PR stunt. To me, that's clear as day. And the lack of mask proves it. They would never have let her leave without a mask if not for a reason. Because if she went with a mask, no one would have known she was hurt. No one would have known he would have hurt. Nobody would have known she was there. But the point this time was to be seen. Now, as clear a PR stunt as that is to me, they did it because they know their core audience is stupid enough to receive it. Now, we, we know it's dumb, but the core audience will eat it up. Case in point, Piers Morgan. He is so real and fighting for freedom of speech, but you think he will have anything to say about Kate's clear PR stunt when he is so hard on Meghan being disingenuous? No, because he, like a lot of people, buy what they are sold about the royals from papers and behave accordingly. Just like how a lot of police officers buy what they are sold about black people 
and move accordingly. And this will only seem like a reach to you if you've been robbed of your objectivity because of empathy politics, where you can't see an issue until it happens to you or someone that looks like you. Because I've never seen white people talk about police like they have since this vigil, whilst black people have been suffering police discrimination and brutality for decades. But a lot of white people can't see it because it's not them. But COVID came along and became the great equalizer because COVID made those white ladies existence outside an act of defiance in the police, the police's eye. And so the police acted how they like to act when they feel defied. And the woman acted how people act when they feel wrongfully accused by resisting. And thus the cocktail for catastrophe was created. And now you know how a lot of black people's negative interaction with the police comes about. It's that very same cocktail. I've seen black people being asked for their identification from police and questioning the officers, why do you want it? And then there's some white people in the comments saying, why couldn't they just give it? Well, why couldn't these women just leave the vigil, vigil sorry, like they were asked? by that same logic. And this is not me trying to take the onus off of the fact that the police did act rashly. I don't rate how they acted. This is just objective free thinking. And I'll end with this. Imagine what the talk would be if Megan did exactly what Kate did. How she would be called out for not adhering to COVID rules in the papers and online. How she would be called out for sympathy chasing. And then tell me if people's empathy isn't conditionally based on their preconceived notions about the person or persons in question. You would think certain newspapers would slander anyone with somebody with something slanderable that's going on in their lives. But here we have Kate getting off scot-free. I say all of that to say we have to start being empathetic slash sympathetic in a logical and methodical way without letting our biases rule us. Start to judge situations by the negative act done and not who it's done to so that you don't have to be black to see police brutality and discrimination and speak up for it and you don't have to be white for everybody to care about your passing. Word to blessing Olusagun, a young black woman who was found dead on a beach with no explanation. If you don't know her story, do your research like I have had to and let's not let empathy politics stop us from caring about or being respectful of other people anymore. Peace.